I've received a lot of comments asking why I've left Adobe After Effects and moved over to Moho, and I thought this would be a good chance to address some of those concerns or questions that you guys have had and kind of uh, look over what's going on with Adobe. Let's check it out. So some of you might remember, um, this was about a year ago, Adobe updated their terms of service. And in doing so, they, uh, they let the cat out of the bag. They were going to essentially own your work and use it to train AI and basically do whatever they wanted with it. As soon as that came out, consumers, artists, people like you, they weren't too happy. And they expressed their concern and some backlash grew, rightfully so. Shortly after that, they backpedaled and they said, okay, we will not be using your content in that way. So then, just a few days ago, Adobe, uh, Adobe released a new terms of service. On Tuesday, which was... What is that? That was like a week ago for me. Um, Adobe announced a tweak version of its terms of service agreement that makes it clear they com the company will not train AI on user content stored locally or in the cloud. Good. That's good for them to clarify and see the backlash and say, okay, we're not going to do that thing because you don't like it. Now, it raises questions. Do I believe Adobe when they say they won't use it to train AI? No, that trust was broken. And I think the way that Adobe is pushing AI right now in their programs and their platforms, why would I believe you that you're not going to use my work to train the AI that you're now providing me? It makes no sense. So no, I do not trust Adobe when they say they won't. Now, how are they going to do that? How are they going to get my work without my consent? I don't know. I'm sure there's some loophole that they could figure out. They're a very wealthy company, very large, and they've got lawyers to back it up. They'll figure it out. During this time, this kind of brought light onto Adobe and it pushed them into a new problem, a new scandal that they were kind of, that people maybe didn't quite know about. I myself didn't know about it. I think there was a big push to leave Adobe products at this point. And in doing so, guess what? The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, takes action against Adobe and executives for hiding fees, preventing consumers from easily canceling software subscriptions. This is something that I didn't know about because I haven't tried to leave Adobe yet. Adobe trapped customers into year-long subscriptions through hiding early termination fees and numerous cancellation hurdles. So this means that if you want to leave Adobe, you can. Not without paying first. Um, so the way that they're kind of, from my understanding, setting this up is that if you want to leave now, that's fine. You just have to pay an early termination for your subscription. Um, or you pay out the remainder of your year. So even though you pay every month, it doesn't matter. You signed an agreement saying that you were going to uh, opt into one full year, which means that you owe us at least that $400 or whatever it might be, maybe more. Um, and once we get our money, you're free to go. That's not fair, right? Because now you're paying for services that you're not going to use in the future. I want to be done now. And this, for me, was bringing up some really shady dealings with Adobe, which I did not like. First of all, I am adamantly against AI, the use of AI and training AI. If you have a more practical, uh, ethical view of AI, more so than I do, that's fine. I don't want to hear it. We just disagree on that. And I don't think we will ever agree on that. Um, until AI can find a way to become more morally approachable when it comes to creating content. At this point, I don't see how it's possible. Putting Adobe's shady dealings aside, there's a second part to the reason why I left After Effects and went over to Moho. It was a very simple and practical reason. Moho's better. 
A little over a year ago, I started a project with After Effects. It was the only program I knew, and I was very comfortable. I was sitting at pro level, really good, really good at After Effects. I had seen, I had begun to see some problems with After Effects, but I really didn't have a better option or solution. Uh, when projects come along, you kind of got to jump on them right away because the client needs them yesterday and you don't have time to learn a new program. So I started the program in After Effects. I was loving the design. Aesthetically, it looked very beautiful. I built these rigs. I wanted the characters to be very uh, versatile, meaning I could rotate them in any direction uh, just so I didn't have to make a bunch of different rigs in different views for each character. So I would say they were advanced rigs and um, they're really pushing the limits of After Effects. I got episode one of that project done using After Effects and it was awful. It was, the work was great. The client loved it, but the process and the experience I had animating was absolutely horrific. So let's go ahead and look at it real quick. I'm going to show you the project that I started with After Effects. And it was in the middle of this project that I switched. I told the client, I can't do it like this. I need to learn a new program and move over to Moho. And they said, okay. And they gave me some time to figure it out. And I'm so glad that I did. Now, let me show you what we got here. Visually, I love it. I absolutely love the characters. I love the lighting. I love the way the whole scene kind of flows together. In this scene, we have three characters. And like I said, these are relatively advanced rigs. I wouldn't say like super advanced, but relatively advanced rigs. Now, I want to do just a simple test. I'm going to show you why I dislike After Effects, at least functioning at this level. I'm going to hit space bar and let's just see what happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. You know why? Because it's doing a RAM preview. In order to watch your animation, you know this. I don't have to preach. I don't have to tell you. It does a RAM preview. Now, if you have a very basic rig or ba basic setup like motion graphics with just some shapes, this will play right off the bat. Probably don't even need a RAM preview. But when you start making character rigs that are more advanced, it has to RAM preview. And um, I'm just let it, I'm going to let it go for five seconds. I just want to watch five seconds of animation. Um, right now we are at half a second. Now I know some of you are going to say, well, Jared, you've got rasterized layers on everything. You got to turn it off to get that nice preview. It shouldn't be the case to where I have to downgrade all my files so that After Effects can figure it out. Now we're about to hit five seconds. I'm just going to hit space bar. And now we're going to wait for it to play. That wasn't fun. It shouldn't have to wait that long to watch your animation. This is why I was driving myself crazy. And there it goes. Nothing crazy happening. It's just a character picking up a bag and another guy walking in. All right. So with that out of the way, let me show you what I did with Moho. Now I tried to find a scene similar to the one in After Effects. Uh, After Effects had three characters, this one has two. But there are some caveats why this one is a little bit more challenging and a little bit more advanced than the one in After Effects. So let's see what happens when I hit space bar. <gasps> it just plays. Oh my gosh, right off the bat. You can see exactly what you did when you made your animation. You don't have to wait minutes and minutes and minutes. I don't even know how long the After Effects one took. And this is an advanced rig for animation in general. After Effects was advanced for After Effects. This one, much better. This one is using dynamics. I have bone dynamics and physics applied to it so that the uh, hair and the cloth move with the animation. So as I animate the character, the cloth is just doing its own thing because the computer is uh, 
processing all that information and calculating what it would look like given the, the dynamics that I have put on. And that is why I switched to Moho. Okay, so these characters actually have uh, the ability to rotate 360 degrees. There's a lot more rigging that's going on with the face than with After Effects was even capable of. Even if I wanted to make this rig or a rig just like this in After Effects, I couldn't. I can't. Not with the way that Moho sets it up. It's just so much more nuanced. So that's why I highly recommend if you want to be a better character animator, make better character rigs. And in order to do that, you need to move over to Moho. I want to show you a few things about Moho that just make it stand out above the rest and especially way above After Effects if you're considering switching. I'm talking about After Effects a lot because that's where I came from. So if you're on the fence about if After Effects is a sustainable option, maybe I can push you towards Moho or quite certainly Toon Boom is another option. But getting into this, something I love about this is that when you import a rig into a scene, you can see I've got all my controls right here and I'm controlling this character in the scene. Okay, this is not a composition that I've gone inside of. Well, kind of, it kind of is, um, but it's right here in the scene. Okay, so I don't go inside anything. I'm just going right to my rig and I can move them around, start doing all that stuff. Um, and then I can go right over to this character and start moving this character around also. Hi there. You know, he's karate chopping, whatever he's doing. And these characters can interact together. That's what's so beautiful. When I was doing work with After Effects, all my character rigs were in different compositions. So I was animating a character inside this composition and one inside this one and trying to figure out where they were going to meet so that they could kind of interact with each other. It was the most frustrating thing and it was all trial and error and guesstimation. This, you get to physically see what's happening. Um, and that's just such a beautiful thing. And again, I'm going to touch on this real quick. Do you see how easy it is to move his arm? Okay, I have these characters set up for uh, FK in the arms, but the legs are, whoops, the legs are IK. So I move them around. You know, you can set up your own kind of like really cool uh, foot rolls and stuff. Almost like it functions as a uh, 3D rig, which is amazing. Anyway, so you just see how easily that moves. We're on control. I want to show you After Effects. This is what I came from. And this is why I'm so glad I'm out of this system. I want to show you moving this character around. And again, I want you to keep in mind, this is a more basic rig than my Moho one. Check this out. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to move the head. Whoops. I'm just going to move the head. All right, here we go. I'm moving it over. Oh my God. That took what? Like five seconds. I'm going to move it back. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. Okay. That was three seconds. You see how long it takes? It takes freaking forever. I moved it, but it didn't move. All right. I'm just trying to move the head. All right. Now let's look at rotations. I'm going to rotate the head. There we go. Not only did it rotate to where I asked it to rotate to, it took like three seconds to go into the wrong spot. Oh my. Ugh. Okay, so now you understand. And this is, I'm also trying to zoom in and out of the composition and it's taking forever to scroll, to zoom in and scroll out. Again, that took about three seconds just to <laughs> roll my mouse, my middle mouse button forward. Isn't that, that's horrible. 
Anyway, I can't even be in here. It is making me so angry watching this. Ah! Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the difference between the two programs. Now, if you're not having that kind of issue with After Effects, uh, maybe your computer's way more powerful than mine and it can handle that kind of stuff with ease. That's great. Stick with it. If it works for you, that's kind of what I'm getting at. If it works for you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For me, it is broke. So I fixed it. Now I made this chart and I want to go over it with you. This is my crude attempt at, I don't know, explaining what's going on here. So you have a basic rig up to an advanced rig. The more advanced your rig gets, your character rig, the more difficult it becomes to work with it. And the more basic your rig, the easier it is to use. So this is kind of where you start your function. This is where it starts. And as you move up towards a advanced rig, it becomes more difficult, right? Now with Moho, as you advance up to an advanced rig, the program does not become more difficult to use. It stays almost the same. Now I'm not going to make it perfect. I'll put it somewhere around here. So let's say you have the most advanced rig. You land around here somewhere. Advanced rig, easy to use. Bottom line, you want to get into this box. Now with After Effects, the higher you go with the advancement of your rig, the more difficult it becomes. So let's say you make the most advanced rig for After Effects. I'm not even going to push it up to here. I'm going to say you max out right around here for advancement and it becomes almost impossible to use. So this is where After Effects lands. And you can see the difference, right? Difficult, not quite as advanced, whereas Moho, very advanced, but easy to use. One last look. Oh yeah. I hope that made sense. I don't know. Is there anything else I want to say? Oh yeah. If you're curious about learning Moho or making that transition, I have some courses where I talk about rigging and animating in Moho and hopefully I can help you on your animation journey. If that's something of interest to you, uh, links are in the description below. Feel free to follow them, peruse, see if you like what you see and, um, no pressure, but, uh, thanks for watching guys. And I hope you guys have a great creative day.